everybody is a participator in your glory. That everybody is a participator in your transforming power, oh God. Do it for the band. Anoint them, oh God. Don't let them just play with skill, but let them play with anointing. Anoint every key, oh God. Anoint every string, oh God. Anoint every instrument, oh God. Let them play like David played. That when they begin to play, demons begin to flee. Let the psalmist sing, oh God, under the anointing. That when they begin to sing praises, the chains are broken in the name of Jesus. Even those in the sound booth, let your anointing fall on them, oh God. Fill us again. Fill us again, oh God. Refresh us again. Let your spirit, oh God, rest on us, God. Do something new for your people. That as we're serving, oh God, you begin to fill us. You begin to fill us. You begin to change us. You begin to make us. You begin to mold us. You begin to transform us until we look like kingdom, until we look like you, oh God. Change us, Father, until when they see us, they see you. Change us, Father, so when they see us, they see you. That when they see us, they want to be drawn into a loving relationship with you, oh God. We're standing in great anticipation. We're charging this act atmosphere with faith. Come on now, we're charging this atmosphere with faith. We're believing God for miracle signs and wonders. I said miracle signs and wonders, but we've got to raise our expectation. We've got to raise our faith in this place. If we want to see the glory of God and we say, Father, take your place, you have the liberty to move. Do what only you can do in this place, oh God. Move by your power and your might. That as our friends and their family are on their way, that they're running right into exactly what they need, oh God. This is not just a regular weekend service, but let it be an encounter with you, oh God. Just like you met Moses at the burning bush and he was transformed, meet us on today. Just like you met Moses on the mountaintop and he was transformed, meet us on today. Just like you met Jonah in the belly of a whale and he was transformed, meet us on today, oh God. Just like you met the Samaritan woman at the well and she was transformed, meet us on today. We want to be different, oh God. Transform us in this place. So when our friends and family, they park their cars and they walk in the door, my prayer, oh God, is that they're running right into exactly what they need. They're running right into the great I am. They're running right into Alpha and Omega. They're running right into the perfect sacrifice. They're running right into their deliverance. They're running right into their healing. They're running right into their breakthrough. Do I have anybody that's believing for breakthrough for your friends and your family? I believe breakthrough is in this place. I believe breakthrough is in this place. I believe breakthrough is in this place. I believe healing is in this place. I believe healing is in this place. I believe deliverance is in this place. I believe deliverance is in this place. I believe his glory is in this place. Send your glory in this place. Fill this room, oh God, with your glory. Fill it, oh God. Fill it, oh God, with your glory. Fill it, oh God, until we walk different. Fill it, oh God, until we talk different. Fill it, oh God, until our marriages are healed. Fill it, oh God, until our children are saved. Fill it, oh, fill it, oh, fill it, oh God. We need your glory. place oh God oh God make us oh God heal us oh God transform us we believe in oh God that people will come in one way but that they'll leave completely transformed we're believing oh God 
that the glory in this place will spill out into the streets, oh God, till our neighborhood looks different. It'll spill out in the streets until our schoolhouses look different. It'll spill out in the streets until our marriages look different. It'll spill out in the streets until our finances look different. I'm believing that the glory in this place won't be able to be contained in these four walls, but it'll spill out into your body. It'll spill out into your mind. It'll spill out into your bank account. It'll spill out generation to generation to generation to generation so that your children's children's children will be delivered and set free that your children's children's children will be healed will be sanctified will be set apart God send the glory send the glory send your glory in this place you in advance, oh God, for your presence that's already here. We thank you in advance for the privilege and the honor to be in your presence. Father, we lay aside every weight that would so easily beset us. We lay aside and we push back against every distraction, every hindrance of the enemy that would stop your glory. Father, we know that the enemy would, that some of us would be left captive. But I know that where your presence is, there's liberty. I know that where your presence is, the captives are set free. I hear the chains falling even now. The chains off of our minds, the chains off of our bodies, oh God. I hear them falling even now. And so we thank you, oh God, for the freedom and the liberty that's already here. We praise you, oh God, that we can worship you and lift our hands and clap our hands and jump and shout in freedom and in liberty. Do I have anybody that's grateful that you can praise them? Grateful that you can praise them without restrictions. Grateful that you can praise them in spirit and in truth. Grateful that you can praise them unashamed. Do I have anybody that came in this place that said, I'm going to lift him on today? I had to press to get here, but I'm going to lift him on today. I may not have everything that I want, but I'm going to lift him on today. I may not feel okay in my body, but I'm going to lift him on today. I may not have everything I need in my bank account, but I'm going to lift him on today. I'm going to lift him. I'm going to lift him. Why? Because he's worthy. He alone is worthy. He alone is worthy. He alone is mighty. He alone is faithful. He alone is good. He alone is kind. He alone is able. He alone is majestic. He alone is strong. He alone is peace. He alone is love. He alone is good. He alone is God. He alone is God. He alone is God. And so we stand in this place before any song is sung, before the word goes forth, and we just want to say you alone are worthy of the glory. You alone are worthy of the honor. You alone are worthy of the praise. You alone, oh God, are worthy of the glory. You alone are worthy of the honor. You alone are worthy of the praise. You alone are worthy of the glory. You alone are worthy of the honor. You alone are worthy of the praise. You alone are worthy of the glory. You alone are worthy of the honor. You alone are worthy of the praise. Somebody bless the name of the Lord in here. Bless the name of the Lord in here. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Great I Am, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the one who was, who is, and is to come. Somebody bless the name of the Lord. He alone is worthy. He alone is worthy. Somebody give God glory this morning. Come, lift up your hands and praise Him. Yeah.
not you, but after this, these few uh, these few moments, I could probably go home. I think I just received something, y'all. Hallelujah. It don't take God a whole long time to do what he needs to do. All he needs you to do is open up, open up. So just for a few moments as a sign of, if you're ready to receive it, I need you to stand to your feet and lift up your hands and begin to open your mouth and say, God, I receive it. Come on, I can't see it. Lift, it. lift your hands and tell them, I receive all you have for me this morning. We've been praying, we've been fasting, we've been praising. I know you're tired, but I want you to lift up your hands and tell them, I receive it. 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 Without the music, without the music, just open yourself. Come on, come on, open your eyes. I receive it. Receive it now. Receive it. You've been fasting. Receive it. Five more seconds and we're going to sing some songs. Come on, five more seconds. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. I receive it. That breakthrough is yours. That deliverance is yours. You would not be the same after today. Now, I'm, I'm ready to act like I received it. Come on, can we give God glory this morning? I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what you're coming to. That's how we used to say it first lady. We found a neighbor, and I want you to turn around and say, neighbor, I don't know what you're coming to. Wait, y'all ain't saying nothing over here. I need you to find somebody. Find somebody. Find. Look at them in their face. I can't see a moon. I can't see. And point them and say, neighbor, I don't know what you're coming to. To give my God. <laughs> we finna go crazy. I need some praises. Find you some place. Let's praise them. Let's praise them. Let's praise them. <laughs> you got it. You got it. You got it. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Put your hands on a real high. Hey. Now make some noise in the room. Yeah. Make some noise in the room. Put your hands on a real high. Listen. Y'all said we make you big. Oh. Y'all say, y'all point the mic out. Tell us, tell us, we make you. That's what we come in this morning. You ready? We shout you. We make you bigger. One more time. Everybody say, let's go. We make you. We make you. Receive all of 
Receive our love. Receive our love as we shout, as we shout your name. Receive our praises. Receive our praises. Your name is high. We glorify. No other name. No other name. No other name like yours. Your name is high.
Everything you need is in his presence. Yeah. Strength in his presence. Direction in his presence. Come on, worshipers, worshipers, worshipers. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Woo. So we come together in one accord to magnify you. Take star on you. In great expectation of what you're about to do in this room.
says she always put your hands on the church Sing it like you know him. See your way, your way. Come on, if he's your savior. See our together, together. See our way. You can have your way. You can have your way. Woo, we done. Let's say, we can have your way. You can have your way. So you can have your way. 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 You can, you can, you can have your way. You can have your way. You can, you can, you can have your way. You can have your way. This is your temple. You can have your way. Life is not my you own, can have your way. but to you, yeah. you can have your way. To you, it belongs. You can have your way. You can have your way. You can have your way. That's how we gotta go. Yeah, you can have your way. You can have your way. You can have your way. You can 
trouble. That's right. Somebody said, God, I want you to have your way. Somebody said, God, I want you to have your way. We didn't get all dressed up. Y'all didn't comb your bundles. We didn't get that fresh haircut. You didn't throw on that cologne or perfume just to come here and spectate. He's still playing. He's still playing. Anybody said, God, I believe it this morning. Come on. I love to say it just like this. God is not nervous and he's not afraid. Come on, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Come on, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. All the overcomers, all the champions, all that say, I'm more than a conqueror. I know I tasted and seen of his goodness. Come on, one more time, clap your hands and let God know you love him. Hallelujah. Well, good morning. My name is Minister Jerome, and I'm one of the, um, the leaders here, and it's my esteemed honor to welcome you. This is Fifth Sunday. We deem Fifth Sunday as our family and friends day. We are so glad that you're with us. Come on. Come on, connect. Let's, let's celebrate our, our, our guests. We celebrate you. We want you to know I got some special guests. I won't call y'all name, but I'm glad to see y'all. We just want you all to know that we're so happy that you're here. Not just our physical sanctuary, but we want you to know that to our virtual sanctuary, we celebrate you. Come on, make some noise for the virtual sanctuary. They have the best seat in the house. Let them hear you. I don't, what's going on? Right, let the virtual sanctuary hear you. Those overseas and all over the place, because this is Connect Church Global. Again, I, the Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So again, this morning, this is our friends and family Sunday, and we're so glad that you're here. I want you to know this. We've been fasting. We've been praying for you all. 
Pastors made some declarations, and we did some numbers that he's de decreed, and we're about, listen, we're going to get there before the end of the year. But we want you to know that we have prayed for you all. We're excited about what God's going to do for each and every one of you physically here or virtually here. We want you to know that you're welcome. The Bible in Psalms 133 and 1 says, behold, if it was 2022, I would say it like this. Check it out. Check it out. Look at here. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. So if you said this morning, well, look, maybe somebody drug you and you said, why are we here? But I mean, I could have been sleeping. I could have been doing so. I, it's Sunday fun day. Somebody said I could have been at a Sunday fun day. And if, you were been, if you're wondering, Psalms 133 and 1 says, check this out, how beautiful it is. You are here for purpose. And I want to declare and decree to every guest, whether you're here physically or virtually, that you will never be the same again beyond the teaching of the word. When the word of God is released, it's not about a person or a personality. When the word comes, it comes to do the work. So we want you to know that you are welcomed here. Look to your neighbor and say welcome. If it's your first time, we want you to know that you're welcome. As Pastor Dana always says, the first time you're a guest, the second time you're family. We expect to see you again. So I'm going to, always, I'm going to say right now, welcome family. We celebrate you this morning. We want you to know that we love you. And I hope that you've come with a mind to get from God. I don't know what you need this morning, but I know that what you need is in the presence of the Lord. So if you would do me a favor, turn your attention to the screen. God bless you. Kevin. And we are so excited about what God's doing here at Connect Church Plano, unapologetically known as Connect Church. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Come on. Y'all can do better than that. I said, come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. The Bible says, let the, let the redeemed of the Lord say so who has been redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Has anybody been redeemed this week? Where are all my redeemed people? Come on. Come on. Where are the redeemed of the Lord? Come on. Come on. Open your mouth. Come on. Give God some praise if you believe the redemption of Jesus Christ has set you free. Somebody shout, I am redeemed. Come on, say it one more time. I like that. Somebody shout it again. I am redeemed. 
I came to tell somebody the curse has been broken. It's been eradicated. You're walking in freedom. You're walking in power. You're walking in victory. No devil in hell can block, stop, or hinder what God has already done in your life. Can I get a scream of a holler? I am redeemed. Give God one more hand clap of praise. Amen. You may take your seat in the presence of the Lord truly. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. If you could just turn me down in the monitors just a little bit. Thank you. Are anybody, is there anybody excited to be here this morning? Amen. What, what a tremendous time. Y'all help me celebrate our guest worship leader, unapologically known as our global worship <laughs> He's got a lot of energy, so we, we meant to text y'all to tell you to take your energy drinks because he's very energetic. But have you enjoyed the service thus far? Yeah. Amen. Come on, let's give God one more hand clap of praise. What a tremendous day it has been. It is, I'm, I'm excited about what I believe God is going to do. Help me welcome some special guests that's viewing online right now, our online community. Come on, let's just thank God for them today. Listen, this has been a time of prayer and fasting and consecration for us. We have been extremely intentional in this season. We believe this is going to be the year where we will dominate. But we're going to control some stuff. Somebody shout, we're going to control some stuff. Come on, say it again. We're going to control some stuff. You like running stuff anyway, so go ahead and say amen. We're going to run some stuff. Amen. So we've been praying. We are here today to celebrate as we break our 21-day time of fasting and consecration. And I believe there's a word from the Lord. But we have been praying not specifically just for strategy, but we have been praying that God would touch your heart so that you could respond to the move of God. I'm concerned that our churches right now are more focused on church growth than they are responding to the move of God. And I really believe that in this region, in this season, and in this, in this hour, that there is a resurgence, there is a reemergence of revival. And please understand that revival is not a one-time event. It's an environment that is produced over time. And so I believe that every time we come together in any service, whether that is in our singles ministries, midweek Bible study, men's Monday, gyms week, whatever it is, I believe that you're in the midst of revival. Somebody shout, I'm in revival. Amen. That means that God is wake, awakening some things in you, praise God. I just prophetically declare that, amen, like a phoenix who is a mystical bird that arises from the ashes, that you coming out from your ashes, glory to God, and you're moving into the things of God. Somebody shout, I'm experiencing revival. Come on, say it again. I'm experiencing revival. And so this week we dubbed and designated this week where it was zoned miracles. Amen. Somebody shout, it was zoned miracles. Come on, say it again. It was zoned miracles. When you look at the life of Jesus, there's a scripture in the book of Acts where it talks about the apostle Paul who begins to record the ministry of Jesus and he begins to share with some of those who were looking to be saved. He says, listen, Jesus went about doing good works in the land. Praise God. Paul talks about the fact that they talked of his goodness and spoke of his power. And what I want to do, because I want you to know that your time of fasting was not in vain. Somebody shut it was not in vain. Come on, say it again. It was not in vain. Now, something may not have changed on the outside, but I believe something has happened on the inside. Praise God. Come on, come on. Your belief level just got upgraded. Praise God. Your faith has taken off to another level. Some shout, somebody shout, it happened on the inside. Eyes have not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men the things that God has in store for us as his people. But it was unto us that God reveals those things by his spirit. And so it's been my prayer that you have opened your heart to be more discerning and more wise in this season. But I would be remiss in not giving a few of you an opportunity to just talk about what the Lord has done for you. Praise God, I've received a great number of text messages from a good number of individuals who have just talked about what the Lord has been do doing. Amen. And I believe that anytime someone, now I'm from the old school church, but you say, giving honor to God. Amen. To the pastor, the first lady, elders, ministers, and deacons on the roster. You know, the Lord has been real good to me. And it the Lord has done in their lives this week as this time of fasting and prayer and consecration has been going forth 
And the first individual, if you can just give me a mic, the first individual I want to bring to the stage is someone who came to this church. I don't know how long it has been. His wife first came to the church, and then shortly behind, he came to church, praise God. And the Lord has just done some tremendous thing, things in the life of their family. He is an entrepreneur. He's a business owner. I believe the oil you sit under is the oil you increase from, praise God. Whatever is on the, oil, on the head hits the body, praise God. And one of the things that we really value in this church is entrepreneurship praise God we're not just here to preach you happy but we want to instruct you on how you can dominate out there in the marketplace amen you should be climbing the corporate ladder you should be running your own companies come on can I get a witness in this room today amen I don't want to just be churched I want to be informed and we have just seen the faithfulness of God at work in this young man's life help me welcome to the stage he's on the base minister Kevin Willingham come on let's give God praise for him Amen. Amen. Now, you can't tell it all, but can you just encourage some people and just tell us what the Lord has done for you during this week, Zoned Miracles. Now, our made men or our, our men's Monday, yeah, yeah. bold men, praise God, we called it bold, bold miracles. miracles. Amen. Somebody shout bold miracles. Bold. You mind sharing your bold miracle this week? Absolutely. So, many of you know I have... A business that he just said, uh, Fit King Nutrition, which is right here right outside here. the door. He's got drinks uh, for, uh, for sale available after service, not free. Amen. Praise God. But please check it out. I'm, it's good stuff. Amen. Go amen. I got I to gotta still make it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I opened the business during the pandemic, actually. Um, not knowing what I was doing. If it wasn't for my mentor right here, I would have been stuck. But um, needless to say, I opened the business during the pandemic. I was still working a nine to five. Um, I had the capital to open the business, but let me tell you something, you need 20 to 30% above your capital when you open the business yes, because yes. it's not enough. Yes. And so as I had not enough, I was still believing in faith. I was still having bold faith that God would still send those resources, connect me with the right people. That took a little longer than expected, you know what I mean? Uh, the people didn't show up right away, so I'm still just coming from my pocket, taking from my home, take it from my kid's mouth to pour into this business on, that God has, I know, ordained and blessed me to have. Things got rough. Yes, yes. <laughs> Things got tough. Um, I only have four months free mm. of rent, right? And so when I got my bonuses from my job, it was going to that on top of still paying contractors, mm. robbing Peter to pay Paul, y'all know, taking out loans, yes, trying I to find it. grants, <laughs> still trying to pay the loan back. While I pay rent, all this other stuff, right? Uh, Were you a tither? Just, excuse me. Oh, you, yeah. You tithe, got Faithful tithe. I just wanted to check real quick. Just figure that ass. <laughs> Let me read it again. Faithful tither. But yes. I just pulled all my uh, receipts. Wow. I was like, I gave that much? <laughs> she. But uh, let me tell you why that much paid off, though. Um, again, the landlord reached out to me. It was like, look, Doc. When did he call you? When did, he, when did you get the call? Tuesday. Tuesday of last week? Of last week. So Tuesday of last, everybody say Tuesday of last week. Tuesday. Yeah. All right, week. go ahead. And, what did he say? Uh, the email basically said, you are behind six months of rent. Six months of rent. Rent is 1625 Y'all do the math. Mm -hmm. You're behind. If you don't write us a check within a couple days, we go change the locks. Now, when did he give you the deadline? What was it? The Friday. Friday of, of this, this, this past This week. past Friday. So last Tuesday, you came to midweek Bible study, right? Monday. Monday. Oh, so Monday uh, was Men's Monday. Men's Monday, and they got midweek Bible study, and you came to church on Sunday. Yes. Right? So so you still had those news. You hadn't told anybody about it. Right. But, you, but when then I preached, I don't remember what I preached, but we said it was going to be what? Zoned miracles. Zone miracles. Zone. Everybody say it was zone miracles. Zone miracles. So give us the number. Roughly what? Over a little over eight thousand dollars is what you need. Eight thousand one hundred twenty-five. Okay. Did you have any of that? Not a dime. Not a dime. Somebody said not, not a, a dime. dime. Not a dime. <laughs> not a dime. All right. So dime. so so tell us what what else happened. So on my nine to five, Apostle always teaches about having those connections, building those connections with different people that might share your same vision, might share your same dream. Never sever anything. Even when I was leaving my 9 to 5, I left the right way. That's good. Right? And so I still build those connections with the people. Um, I, would, I immediately went into prayer mm. that Tuesday when I got the news, crying like, God, look, 
You said you'd never leave me, you never forsake me. I know you promised this to me. I know you said this was going to bless my family. I know you said this is going to move us out from where we are, move us above poverty, move us above this, take us into the promised land. I know you said I, I was going to do ministry out of there. These doors cannot close. Come on here. These doors cannot on, close. And so I just cried out and being, I was specific, said, God, give me the names <laughs> of the people that you want to bless me. That's, that's, that's my Give kind of prayer. Hold, hold on just a second. Give me the names of the people that you want to bless me. What Can y'all just say that, Lord? Give me the names of the people you want to bless me. Glory to God. The Bible says uh, it is um, um, given, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, that he will cause men Somebody shout, I need a name, I need a name, I need a name. Come on, look at somebody and tell them, I, I need a name, I need a name right now. Are you the one? Come on, look at somebody and tell them, are you the one or shall I wait for another? Are you the one? Which one? I need a name, I need a name. I need, that might be the sermon today. I need a name. Woo! I need a name. I need a name. The name where demons tremble. The name of Jesus Christ. Come on, come on, come on. I don't, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Somebody said, I need a name. Come on, come on. All right, all right. So he gave you names. He gave me names. Gave you names out of prayer. Out of prayer. Man, come out on here. Prayer. Out of prayer. Go ahead. I reached out to three individuals. Three. Somebody shout three. Three. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Come on. I come reached on, out to on. three. 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 Father, the first son. one said, how much you need? Lord, have mercy today. First how one said, how much you need? need? How much you need? He gave me a check of $5,000. My God. <laughs> Woo! Now, now, what's crazy is some of us, of course, would shout on that, and we probably wouldn't call the second and third person because we would just assume, assume that God want to give us partial miracles. Right. Listen, man, you're coming into a season where it won't be partial, it'll be complete. All right, okay. We, we're going to shout in a minute. In a minute, right. yes. All right, so everybody shout 5,000. 5,000. All right, keep going. Come on. Ooh, boy, I feel so my I feet getting light next... right now. <laughs> my feet getting light a little bit right now. Go ahead, go ahead. I reached out to the next two. They said, what do you got left? What do you have left? They asked, what do you need? They said, what do you have left? Wow. I gave them the amount. They said, when do you need it? I said, by Friday. Say no less. We send it tomorrow. Wow. The two sent it to me. Now I have the total, 8,125. Y'all, the Lord with this shout. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. I'm not talking about a partial miracle, but I'm talking about a total victory. Come on, can we praise God for the man of God, for his miracle week? He got a bold breakthrough, a bold miracle. Come on, where my church of God in Christ people at? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look, look, look. Man, I'm so proud when of you. When I, when I, look, I'm, I have a wife, right? She's back there, or shouting, she maybe ran out. I don't know. Um, so I'm not in this by myself. So y'all know the stress. That has been on her. The stress that's on her. My God. Crying like, Lord, what we gonna do? Do I have to take out another loan? Do I have to pull from my savings? I said, don't pull from that. Let God be God. My God. Woo! Don't Jesus. pull from that. Ah. I said, let God be God. He's going to show up because he promised me that. Jesus. He promised me that. So we're going to stand on solid ground, and we're going to have faith for our faith. And God up. made it happen. Jesus. Come on, let's give God praise. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Y'all want to shout on that? Come on. Hey! Some of 
y'all still don't believe. That's one miracle. I'm not going to call her to the stage without giving her business, but a young lady came to our office a couple of weeks ago. She said, Pastor, I need to meet with you. She began to share some things that she was up against, with her family, a car, and situations like that. And she had been told that the car was irreparable. There was no part that was available. Nowhere in the world was it available. So she says, we need, I need some wisdom. I need you to pray for us. And my wife and I and Elder, Elder Price, we prayed with her and we encouraged her. We gave her some wisdom. And she says, and I'm believing God that my husband's going to get a job. She said, you know, he's a hard worker and I'm just believing. And, and he, he, you know, he doesn't have the transportation. And I think it was Elder Price that says he can go and work for this company and they'll give you a truck. Well, I got news that she got hired at that company. He got hired at that company. And then I got news that they gave him a truck, too. Yep, so y'all don't know when to shout. They gave him a truck, too. I ain't done. I ain't done. Then I'm told that she got an email or a phone call from the shop where her car was stuck at. And they said, out of nowhere, parts have now become available. And the car that was in disrepair has now been repaired. You can come pick up your vehicle. That's, y'all don't know when to shout. Lord, help me today. Somebody shout, soul miracles. Soul miracles. Soul miracles. Soul miracles. All right. Some of y'all still don't believe. Some of you don't believe. It's all right. The brother came to this church. He said, Pastor Ken, I'm not from here. He says, I just want a new start. I just want a new start. I moved to this city. There's something about you, man, I like. I like your church. He says, I'm going to believe God. I'm going to stay right there. He says, this is what I need you to do. I need you to pray for me. I need a good job, take care of myself, my kids. I just want to be all right. But his brother, we began to pray and we strategize together, amen. We put a few people together and we're going to help this brother out and give him the pointers where he needs to go and opportunities. Well, I got news today, uh, this week, during the week called what? Miracle Week. Brother went on the interview and in the interview they hired him while he was there. Okay, y'all, y'all don't know when to shout. They hired him while he was there. And I just decree and declare that opportunities and doors are opening for somebody in this church. Somebody shout, this is my miracle week. Can y'all give God praise for the miracles and the demonstration of the provision of God? Come on, give God one more hand clap of praise. Listen, we, um, you may take your seat. I guess I can share another miracle. Uh, if you've been rocking with us for any length of time, you know, we've had some issues with our air conditioning units, and I've been in a, oh my God, somebody just brought a thousand dollar check to Kevin Willingham for his business. Oh my God. check before I endorse it to myself. Come on. Come on, get the check. Come on. Where's the wife? Y'all come get this check. Come on, let's give God praise. Amen. Right there. Miracles are all in the house. Somebody shout, I need a name. 
I, I need a name. I, I'm calling friends. I need a name. I need a name. You said the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. I want my righteous transfer. Somebody shout, I need a name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God. Man, look at that. Boy, I tell you, right in the house of God. He don't just give you enough. He gives you overflow. So my prayer is for the person who wrote the check. I'm believing that God would do something in their life. Come on. That God blows their mind. That God does something in their situation. That God pulls a little open that business of hers. I, I just... I just decree debt cancellation. Hallelujah. I decree healing in our body. I decree a blessing that overflows. You said you give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Look at God. Look at God. Y'all sit down. Somebody shout, look at God. Look at God. Now. I was, I was about to share another story and then another miracle happened, kind of like the woman with the issue of blood who interrupted Jesus' journey to work a miracle in somebody's house. And this brother got a miracle in the midst of me talking about the miracle. Let's give God praise for them, amen. Wow. All right. So, so if, you, if you know your church, listen, we're doing everything that we can to expand our children's wing right now is under construction. Let's give God praise for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Our kitchen will be finished, praise God, by mid-February. Let's give God praise for that. Hallelujah. But we got another miracle. Somebody shout, there's another one. There's another one. There's another one. Uh, Deacon Ronalds has, has just, this, this air conditioning and heating unit situation has been the bane of our church's experience. And we've been in debate with the landlord saying, I ain't paying for it. You pay for it. And he said, well, it's your responsibility. You. So we just went back. Who's going to pay for it? Well, I, I got an email this week. Um, this week. This week. Uh, and the email said, good evening, Pastor Ken. The landlord has approved the purchase of $24,000 to replace both He says, all we need you to do, and I met with the, the, the property manager. I said, now listen, dog, I want to be clear. I ain't paying for this, right? He says, no, no. Just sign the contract, man. Just sign it. He just wants to make sure it's what you want. Lord, help me today. And so we thank God that what we've been praying for God to do is going to be done over the next several weeks. Can we give God praise for that? Amen. Amen. We just, I'm just giving you something to hang your hat on knowing that if God did it for them, he's going to do it for you. Amen. Somebody shout, I just got two prophetic words. Y'all ready? Two. Somebody shout two prophetic words. And here's what I want you to do. It's not about your name. It's for you. Y'all ready? Just lean in a little bit. Lean in. And here it is. I'm going to whisper it to you. I'm next. Come on, God. Come on. That's, that's, I just, I just, I just need to tell somebody I'm next. Weeping may endure for nights, but joy comes in the morning. I came to prophesy to somebody and tell you, you made your way to the house of God to hear that you are next. I dare you to take your prophetic finger and point it at yourself and say, I am next. I'm next, I'm next, I'm next.
My family is next. My children are next. My business is next. The job opportunity is coming. I'm next. Greater is coming. Somebody shout, I'm coming next. I'm next. I'm next. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory. 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 Somebody holler glory. Come on, without any music, can we just make a joyful noise? Uh, somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. Somebody holler, I'm next. I'm next. Your delay is over. Your season of not enough is over. Insufficient fund seasons have just ended in your business, in your bank account. Somebody holler, I am next. Give God one more hand clap of praise. Amen. Take your seat. We got to move on. Y'all seem like y'all want to have church today. Hallelujah. Listen, this is a perfect opportunity for us. One of the things that I believe, the uh, reason why God has done some things, not only for this church, but done in the life of Kevin the Willinghams, is one of the things about this couple is they're givers. They're givers. They never let a difficult season cause them to be conflicted in the area of honoring God. And what I want to do this morning in this church, we believe in honoring God with the first part of our increase. We are a generous church. We've done so many things in this season, in this, in this city, in this region, and many of the individuals in this room have been blessed because of this church. But listen, in order for us to be able to do the vision that God has given us, somebody shout, it takes finances. Say it again, it takes finances. It takes finances for us to be able to do ministry on a level of excellence, to be able to bring in individuals to come and share with us and minister to us, just not in word and worship and just... We just thank God for all that he has done, but you get an opportunity to sow into the miracles that have already taken place. The Bible says where a man's heart is, there his treasure will be as well. And one of the things I know for certain that God says there's only one, act, one area of your life that he asks you to test him in. It's in the area of your money. God says, prove me, test me, and I'll show you that I can beat you in giving. And for some of you, this may not be your church, and maybe this is your first time coming to church or whatever the case may be. But one of the things that I know, something that can change the season in your life is when you choose to invite God in the area of your finances. It's my belief that 60 to 70 percent of our prayer requests is centered around this area of money. Amen. Amen. That if you just got one check, 60 percent of your prayers are already been answered. One check, one check, just with the right amount, 60% of your prayers would already been answered. So here's what I want you to do. One of the things we want to do is we want you to be, you want to understand what it is that you're doing in this moment. We don't believe in strong arming people, coercing people, manipulating people in the area of giving. All we're asking you to do is give what rightfully belongs to God. Give what rightfully, somebody shout rightfully, belongs to God. In the book of Psalms it says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. Everything we have is given to us on loan, but it, believe, it belongs to God. And if God can't talk to you about what he had gave you, that has become an idol in your life. He says, and I have no idol before me. And so the best way to appropriate our relationship with our treasure is to include God in it. One of the things I'm going to ask you to do is help partner with us today. As you know, we're expanding our children's wing. One of the things that is so important to us in this season this year is nothing more important to us in this season than our student ministry. Amen. Let's give God praise for that, our student ministry. And so we're doing what we need to do to expand the space. We're having services that are specifically designated for our students. Amen. Our young adults are gathering. There's so much that's happening this year, but we want to make sure that we're properly equipped to do what we need to do. But how many know it takes finances? Amen. So I want to invite you into an opportunity of worship through the area of giving. Amen. Behind me on the screen, those of you who are chiming in online, this gives you an opportunity to say, Pastor Ken, I want to partner with what God is doing in your life. Listen, we want to finish the kids area we want to finish the kitchen area but how many know it takes finances to do it somebody shout it takes finances to do it amen somebody say it again it takes finances to do it amen 
We're at the end of the month, amen. We've done a lot of opportunities of connecting and gathering. And at the end of service, we'll talk a little bit about that. But how many know it takes finances to do these things? And so here's what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to, to support this church by helping us, by saying, Pastor, I'm going to get under this vision today. I'm going to get under this vision today. And I'm going to sow maybe a supernatural seed today. Someone kicked it off and said, Pastor, I'm sowing a seed into Kevin for $1,000. Maybe you're in this room. You say, listen, I want to be a blessing to this church. And listen, I want to get in the wind of that. I want to get in the wave of that. And I want to write a supernatural seed to be a blessing to this church so that you all can do what God has called you to do. But whatever level of faith that it is that you're on, I want you to sow something to signify that you believe in this vision. Amen. Is there anybody that believes in the vision of this house? Amen. Anybody believes in the vision of this house? Amen. And so something we do, first thing, is we, we celebrate our tithers. And so if you're going to be tithing in this service today, we want you to stand at your feet right now so we can just celebrate God for you. Come on. Look at these tithers around the room. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's give God praise for them. If you're going to be tithing, come on. All of my tithers. Come on. Y'all can do better than that. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. All of our tithers. These are individuals that Pastor Kim... I'm trusting you, trusting God with the first part, and they are at a place in their walk with God where they're saying, God, I'm at least going to honor you with the 10. Now, those of you in this room say, I don't know what tithing in. Well, this is the perfect opportunity for you to do it. It basically means that if God is giving you any increase on any level, you're smart, just give him 10%. That's all God is asking for because I believe that what you do with the 10 determines what happens to the 90. I'm going to say it again. What you do with the 10 determines what happens with the 90. Somebody shout, what I do with the 10 determines what happens to the 90. If you want the 90 to be blessed, you got to honor the Lord with the 10. And your 10 comes into the house of God so that there can be proper support in this house for us to do what it is we've been called to do. So if you're in this room, you say, Pastor Ken, I want to get in on that. Go ahead and stand to your feet. We want to celebrate God for you. We want to celebrate God and thank God for you. Come on, let's give God praise for these persons in this room. Praise God. Now, you say, Pastor Ken, it's not a pay week for me. Well, you can still participate in worship through giving. Here's where you give what's called a free will offering. It's an offering of any amount that you believe the Lord is speaking to you about. And whatever that amount is, I want you to stand in your feet right now so we can celebrate God for you. Come on, let's celebrate God for all of these persons in this room who are sowing and investing in the furtherance of the work here of Connect Church. Amen, amen, amen. And every other person say, Pastor Ken, it's just not time for me. I don't have it. Listen. You can participate by faith. And I'm decreeing and declaring that by faith, this will be the last service you come in where you're not able to give what you desire to give. Amen. And if that's you, I want you to stand right now as well because we're getting ready to pray. We're getting ready to pray. And at this point, everyone should be standing. Amen. Everyone should be standing. The instructions are on the screen behind me. If you can put that on the screen in how you can support and give. Praise God. And I want to pray over your gifts today. I want you to hold that seed. If you're giving through technology, just hold that, that phone up as high as you can. Whatever means of what you're doing, your checkbook, whatever you need to do. But I'm about to decrease some provision over your situation financially. I'm just going to decree, praise God, that bonuses are coming your way. I'm going to decree, praise God, by faith that increase, raises, and promotions are coming your way. That God does something supernaturally within your business, praise God. That you're going to get favorable contracts, praise God. Favorable, somebody shout favorable contracts. Hallelujah, say it again, favorable contracts. So Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for every person that is sowing in this house today. They're supporting the furtherance of this mission here at Connect Church. Lord, we believe that this is an opportunity of worship as well. And so, Father, as we invest in the furtherance of this mission, I pray, God, that you blow on their money, that you bless it, that you prosper it. We bind every spirit of limitation and every restrictive spirit that would hinder their money from flowing properly in the areas of their lives. I thank you that debt cancellation is in this room today. I thank you that miracles signs and wonders are in this room today and today we partner in faith believing that it is more blessed to give than it is to receive if you believe that just shout I receive in Jesus name we have pe persons in the aisles that are ready to serve you we're going to invite our worship team back up amen we're going to go higher in worship are y'all ready 
I said, are y'all ready? Come on, let's give God praise. Amen. Let's go a little bit higher. Come on. That's good. Somebody shout, he's good. Come on, let's worship God for a few more moments. He bless you, God, for your goodness. Thank you for this season, Father God, of overflow. Thank you for the powerful testimonies already, God. And we're expecting more of your goodness in this season. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We can speed up a little bit. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. The song simply says this. Oh, the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. You know it. Whom shall I? Yeah. Let's sing together one more time. So the Lord, the, the Lord, Lord is my light and salvation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whom shall I fear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shall I the Lord is my light. Lord is my light and salvation. Let's sing together. Whom shall I fear? I see your goodness in the land of 
Tired. I'm gonna let him do all of that. Amen. Amen. Whatever you're drinking and it's energy, can you subscribe me to a subscription of whatever it is that you drink? Amen. Let's give God praise once again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Take your seat. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm truly excited to be here today to share uh, with you all. I did ask y'all to just take a seat, but here's what I want you to do real quickly. Uh, I want you to find someone you didn't ride in your vehicle with, and I just want you to greet them and tell them it's good to see you today. Come on. Can we do that real quickly? Just someone you didn't ride with, tell them it's good to see you today. It's good to see you today. Lights up. Lights up.
might be hearing that for the first time uh, that's kind of our promulgation that's our mantra for the year uh, that goodness and mercy is going to follow us all of my days somebody shout all of my days not just some of my days not just a few of my days but somebody shout all of my days all right let's let's back that up with some scripture if you've been with us for any length of time you know that we are in the book of Psalm, chapter number 23. If you can stand one last time out of respect for the reading of the word of the Lord. We're going to read the entire psalm, and then I'm going to give you the verse uh, of special emphasis for us today. And I'm going to read this particular verse uh, in multiple translations so that it can be made plain on today. Uh, if you have it, say, I have it. Amen. Amen. Psalm chapter number 23. Uh, can we read it together? Can we do that? I am reading from the ESV translation version of the Bible. Um, I'm sure to be here on the screen momentarily. If you can, just let's go. The Lord is my shepherd. Come on, let's start over. We got to say it together. Y'all ready? One, two, three, go. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over with favor, rather, okay? Verse 6, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all my days. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I just, I just like that. All of my days. <laughs> All of my days, all of my days. Just hit it one more time. Come on. Let's sing it church together. Together we say goodness and mercy. Psalm 23 and 5 says, I'm going to read it once again from the ESV, God's Word translation. And I believe this is the amplified version, but ESV says, You prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You've anointed my head with oil. My cup runs over with favor. Now, God's Word translation says, You 
prepare a banquet for me while my enemies watch. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. I like that banquet. Everybody say banquet. Now, I believe this is the amplified, or it could be the Eugene Peterson version, but the next one says, look at it right here. It says, you serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. Uh, you revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessings. I like that one. I like that one. I, I like that. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. So I want to talk just a few moments from these words. It's a prophetic decree. Two words. Y'all ready? Here's what I want you to do this time. I want you to prophesy to your neighbor. Two words. Everybody shout two words. Those two words are, look at them, tell them, let's eat. <laughs> let's eat, Doc. Let's eat. Somebody shout, let's eat. Let's eat. Let's eat. Let's eat. You may take your seat. Boy, oh boy, we're in for trouble today. We're going to get in trouble today. We're going to get in trouble. All right, thank you all so much. All right, uh, this, this, this morning's uh, message is meant to serve both as a prophetic decree as well as a literal decree. For the last 21 days, this church has been on a spiritual journey seeking the wisdom and counsel of God concerning what we believe God wants to do through us this year. Uh, this time of fasting has produced something on a spiritual level that cannot be blocked, stopped, or even hindered. For those of you who participated in this time of consecration on any level, I'm not talking about perfect attendance, but if you participated on any level, whether that was a Daniel fast or you just paused for just a moment to reflect on the things of God, I want to tell you what the Lord told me this week while in prayer, and it's these words, the table has turned for you in this season. I, 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 just, I just need a few of you. I just need a few of you. I don't have a whole lot to give you, so you, you better receive it. The tables have turned for you in this season. Somebody shout, the tables have turned for me in this season. Come on, come on, prophesy to yourself and say, the table has turned for me in this season. Come on, say it once again, the table has turned for me in this season. According to Luke's gospel, chapter number 22, verses 28 to 38, uh, Jesus talks to his 12 men, his 12 disciples, his 12 apostles who had been serving tirelessly with, with him. And uh, some of them may have wondered if there was truly any benefit to serving God when they began to look at the complications of their personal lives. And so Jesus begins to tell them, he says, you are those who have stood by me in my trials and I confer on you a kingdom just as my father conferred on me so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Let me just first take a quick moment. Thank you, sir. Let me just take a quick moment first and foremost to restate the purposes of, of God over your life this year. It's my belief that over the last several weeks we have argued this idea that if, if this is going to be the year where you dominate, which means you will excel to the highest place possible this year. Somebody shout, I'm excelling to the highest place. Highest. Say it again, I'm excelling to the highest place. In other words, your next has God all over it. Your next has God all over it. Lord, help me today. Whatever you're about to get into next, your next has God all over it. Your next move has God all over it. Somebody shout, God is all over it. As we consider the watermark of Psalm 23, we find that it is held in light of Israel's history. The Psalter, David, takes the time to paint a metaphoric picture of for us regarding the journey from Egypt to Canaan. Not only that, but Psalm 23 gives us invaluable insights into the character of God and his plan for his children. Somebody shout, God's got a plan for me. 
Not only is God the God who takes care of our wants according to verse 1, but we also get a chance to understand that he restores our soul, which means he provides us with spiritual nourishment. But now, according to part A of verse 5, he says, you prepared a banquet for me while my enemies watch. I like that one. Somebody shout, he's got a banquet table prepared for me. What's interesting here is David does something in this text that is designed to encourage the reader. He is sharing with us, hear me, the details of a celebration that precedes a battle. He's actually recording a celebration that precedes a battle. Everybody shout, a celebration that precedes a battle. Say it once again, a celebration that precedes a battle. Now, the key is this celebration of this celebration is, however, that, that this is where you and I understand this, is that if we're going to eat at God's table, we must comprehend this idea that we must be willing to be served. Somebody shout, I got to be willing to be served. God says that this is a dinner banquet where I'm going to do the serving. And some of you all are so used to fighting your way through the door that you don't know how to let God open the door and serve you. And I came to tell somebody because of all of your hard work and all of your labor and all of your toil and all the things that you've worked hard to get to where you are, this is a season where you're going to be able to take your rest and let God serve you. All right, I'm just looking for a few of you to just receive that by faith. Take your rest and let God serve you. Come on, shout it. I'm going to let God serve me. Now, what's interesting in this, in this journey for the children of Israel on their way to Canaan, uh, they didn't leave without complaining. Because sometimes when God is serving us at his banquet table, it seems like he's a little slow with preparing the meal. And the slothfulness of him preparing the meal makes us question his character and his integrity and wonder whether or not he's going to come through. And so the writer in Psalm chapter 78, he records some things that were taking place in, his, in their heart. He says they tested God in their heart by demanding the food they crave. Now understand that what God may serve may not be what your appetite wants. Because God is not interested in satisfying your flesh. He wants to satisfy your spirit. He wants to give you water that causes you to never run dry. I'm talking about a well where you'll never be empty. And so they tested God because what was on the menu or what he was serving was not the very thing they wanted to eat. So he says they tested God in their heart by demanding the food they craved. They, they spoke against God saying, can God spread a table in the wilderness. We've come to realize that the precursor of Psalm chapter 23 starts first with us understanding that we must take on the practice of the lowliest position, which means that as sheep, you got to stay in a sheep's place. For David to say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He's helping us to understand that our primary occupation is that we must stay in the position of sheep. Somebody shout, I'm God's sheep. When we assume this role as sheep, it comes with benefits of us enjoying provision at the expense of others watching us eat. And I, I need you to catch the revelation of this is that there are going to be some people watching you eat in this season. Yeah, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it again. This is going to be a season where everybody that said your business wouldn't make it, they're going to see you watch and eat this season. Everybody said that you were going to take that dead-end job and it wasn't going to amount to nothing. They're going to watch. God provides for you, praise God, on levels of supernatural living. Somebody shout, my enemy is going to watch me eat. Say it again, my enemies is going to watch me eat. As David unpacks the faithfulness of God, he says that as an honored guest, because he assumes the role as sheep, when you unpack this and study this text in the original Hebrew language, David uncovers something that happens in ancient history. He says at the table as sheep, we got table rights. Everybody shout table rights. Say it again, table rights. According to Philippians chapter 4, Paul writes to the Philippian church while he was constrained in jail. He says, and God will meet all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. When you understand 
table rights for David, it meant that his enemies, hear me, no longer posed a threat because he was at the right table. Okay, okay. Your enemies no longer pose a threat because you're at the right table. Okay. It, don't matter, it doesn't matter who's watching you. It doesn't matter who's praying against the agenda of God concerning you. You got table rights, Lord, help me today. And because you're at the right table, your enemies are no threat to you eating in this next season. To understand this, we got to then talk about the culture of the ancient East. Because what happened was, Josh, if you were invited to someone's table, the host was obligated to safeguard its visitors from any enemy at all cost. In other words, the fact that you're inviting them to the table, which means you assume the liability and risk they may deal with while sitting at your table. And God says, because you're at my table, I assume all of the risk. Lord, help me today. Okay, okay, come on, talk to me today. I, I came to tell you, because you're at God's table, he's assuming all of the risk, including the tab as well. God's going to cover the bill while you eat. He who knew no sin became sin that I might become the righteousness of God. So I want you to understand that as table rights, God assumes all of the risk involved in hosting you. He assumes the risk. He's obligated to safeguard you as a visitor from the enemy at any cost. Since this is your season to eat, then what we got to do is have a conversation about another door that we're going to walk into. Somebody shout, I'm going through another door. We've argued that this is going to be the year where we will dominate. The first door is what? Leadership. Everybody say leadership. leadership. Meaning that this is going to be a door where you walk through where you got to let God lead you. Somebody shout, let God lead you means you got to get out of the way and let the Father lead you. Quench not the Holy Spirit because if you quench not the Holy Spirit, wherever you go is where God's calling you to go into. I don't believe it's possible to get outside the will of God when you have a discerning spirit to let God lead you. And this ain't the time for you to be taking unnecessary tests. So you got to be willing to let God lead you. Somebody shout, I got to let God lead me. The second door that you're going to go into this season is the door of marketability. Somebody shout marketability. In other words, you're going to be marketable in this season. Somebody shout, I'm going to be marketable. Now, we made the door red this time because this is a door you got to be real careful of. And next week, I'm going to deal with a series of teachings entitled Algorithms because you got to be careful with the algorithm associated with your marketing. Because all the things that you struggle with is probably because you're spending too much time in one area and the enemy thinks that's what you want. So he's marketing you things that's getting you off your course. But please understand that as you go through the door of marketability, you got to be aware of your appetite. All right, all right. That's just a prelude into next week's discussion. Somebody shout, I am marketable. Marketability simply put, it means that you are now in demand. All right, all right. I, I, I was just, uh, somebody shout, I'm in demand. I'm in demand. You may not call me, but the right call is about to happen. I, I just prepare, get your text messages ready, your emails ready, check your inbox, things you've been waiting on. Somebody shout, I am in demand. According to the Living Bible, Matthew 5, 13 corroborates this statement. He says, you are the world's seasoning to make it tolerable. Man, man, we could just sit with that right there. You are the world's seasoning to make it tolerable. If you lose your flavor or your marketability, what will happen to the world? In other words, I've got you in the world, which is why Jesus prayed the high priestly prayer in John 17, that you not be taken out of the world because in the world you are marketable and your marketability should drive people to a relationship with God. So he says, if you are, the, you are the world seizing to make it tolerable, if you lose your flavor, what will happen to the world? And you yourselves will be thrown out and trampled under the foot as worthless. He says, you are the world's light, a city on a hill glowing in the night for all to see. Don't hide your light. I'm going to say that again. I need to shout that one. Don't hide your light. You don't have to capitulate. You don't have to quiver back. You don't have to step back in this season. Let God be known in this season of your life. Somebody shout, I'm done hiding my light. Look at your neighbor and tell them, don't hide your light. 
Let it shine for all. Let your good deeds glow for all to see that they will praise your heavenly Father. This door of marketability, for those of you in this room dealing with something in your life and you wonder whether or not you qualify to be at the marketability table, please understand that this door of marketability is not predicated or based on merit. Merit. Somebody shout merit. Listen, please understand that God is inviting you because he loves you. And there's blood on the door to qualify you to walk through the door. Lord, help me today. I came to tell somebody, I don't care what you've been going through up to this point. It doesn't matter what your past is. I want you to know that there's blood on the door. And you can walk, Lord, help me today. You can walk right on through the door. Somebody shout, I'm walking through the door. The invite to God's table is purely based on the gracious host. I want you to write this down worth memorizing. His character sets the table. His grace saves us a seat. His character sets the table. But his grace saves us a seat. Grace means unmerited favor, which means none of us qualify to be at the table. But aren't you glad that he is not considering your unrighteous acts that when he looks at you and lets you walk through the door, he's not looking at your sin. He's looking at the sacrifice of another who became a lamb and got up on a cross for your sin so that you could walk through this door of marketability. Somebody shout, I'm in demand. I dare you to stand on your feet and just holler and let the devil know right now, I'm in demand. Come on, come on, say it again. I'm in demand. I'm in demand. I'm in demand. It don't matter who don't believe it. I'm in demand. I'm favored by God. I got the oil of God. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. For the steps of a good man is ordered by the man plans his way, but it is the Lord that guides his steps. Somebody shout, I'm in demand. All right, take your seat, take your seat. I'm doing good on time. Lord, help us today. I feel you praying, Lexi. I'm doing real good. I'm doing real good. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, so, so here's what we got to do. Here's what we got to do. Since this is a door you will experience this year, and this is a season for us to eat. Now, one of the things about me, just let you all know, man, I love fried chicken. If I hadn't told you, I love fried chicken. Listen, I get ex- I light up. I do, do. I can't wait either. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I love fried chicken. I just love it. I just love it. I can eat it with anything. You, just, you ain't got to give me no side. Just give me the chicken. That's just, 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 just make sure it's seasoned good. Just, 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 I don't need no sides. I don't know. Just the chicken. Chicken. So I have, I have traveled the world looking for the best fried chicken. I have. No joke. Ask my wife. I was even in Canada saying, where is the fried chicken joint? I have traveled all over to look for some fried chicken. She over here, she's, she's right with me. We, we, we had fried chicken conversations. It's right here, right here. We can't wait to do it. Now, when I'm invited over somebody's house, my first question, what's on the menu? What's on the menu? I would like for you to come over and be my guest today. Great, great. Appreciate you. Um, who cooking and what's on the menu? That's, I'm sorry. That's just, just, just me. Forgive me. I don't mean to be so forward, but I tend, some say I'm a picky eater. So I just want to know who's cooking and what's on the menu. So, 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 so I think we, it's fair to suggest that if, if we're going to eat while our t- enemy is watching, then it's fair to conclude that y'all want to know, right? What's on God's menu? Come on, anybody? Come on now. Don't act like you don't be asking. Come on around holiday season, family season. Who cooking what? And what are we having? All right, so what we got to do now is we got to talk about the menu. That's what we got to do. We got to talk about what's on God's menu, right? We got to know what's on the menu. If we're going to walk the door of marketability, then it's necessary that we have this conversation as sheep concerning What's on God's menu in this season of my life? Somebody shout, what's on the menu? 
Well, I've got news for you today to tell you that's some great things on the menu of heaven. Hallelujah. I came to tell somebody that if you're going to eat in this season, God is only providing what you're interested in. Hallelujah. Okay, 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 okay. He's only providing what you're interested in. In other words, I guarantee you're going to eat what's at his table. Now, I promise for all of my picky eaters, he's got enough for you as well. For all of you who are uh, uh, veg- uh, what, what you call vegetarians, uh, 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 all of the tarians, whatever your thing is, I want you to know that he's got what you need at the table. All right, so let's discuss the menu behind the marketability door. What's on the menu is provision. Somebody shout provision. Provision. Protection. Protection. Somebody shout protection. Protection. And presence. Somebody shout presence. presence. God's menu comes with as sheep. Stay. Provision. Protection. And presence. I want that to sink in for a second. Provision, protection, and presence. And I want, I want to look at these three menu items didactically, and, and I want to make a few observations uh, that's going to help us while we eat. And the reason why I want to talk first about provision, because some of you think you know what provision is, and you don't. And sometimes... When it doesn't appear like you're getting what you desire, you think God is not providing. Because sometimes provision comes disguised unaware. In other words, he's providing and you don't even know it. He's pro- you know how many accidents you have survived that you didn't know about? Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Do, 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 do you know that when they were looking to lay people off, your name was mentioned? But God took your name out their mouth. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk back. Do you know how God's been providing for you? Do, do you realize the number of infirmities that the blood overcame because of what's in your blood? You should be dead right now. But, but God took. He's been providing. Somebody shout, he's been providing. So the first menu item is provision. Everybody shout provision. Provision is accepting God's power. To meet the needs of your life. Accepting God's power to meet the needs of your life. Before you just skip this item and deduce it to an item that is assumed to be on your most important list. It's important to see provision as something that may or may not always seem obvious. Because what happens when life gets hard, sometimes provision isn't the easiest to see. And if you look at your scriptures, there's a scene in the book of Genesis that is believed to have occurred on Mount Moriah. It was at Mount Moriah where God tells Abraham to sacrifice his son, Isaac. Isaac, the link between Abraham and God's promise to make him a great nation. And so God says, the first thing I want to see is if you're willing to sacrifice it all for what it is I want to do in your life. And some of us are unwilling to let go of some stuff, which is why we can't get to the next level. Because all we see is what's in our hand. And God said, if you just loose what's in your hand and trust me, I'm going to... Okay, okay. Look at your name and tell them, loose what's in your hand. So you see this in Genesis chapter 22, moving swiftly through it. Verse 22, verse, uh, chapter 22, verse 2, it says, Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love. God would always ask, always ask for what you love. It's easy to give up something you don't love. (laughs) I'll leave that alone. Easy to give up something you don't love, but God will ask for what you love. He says, and go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain, and I will show you. The question that begs asking is, why would God make such a demand, especially after he and his wife has shouted over the son that they had had been promised? So he asked for the very thing he wanted. And this is interesting why God would ask this. It's because Abram's neighbor, or Abraham's neighbor, expected that the gods of their day um, would actually come through for he and his wife better than the God that he was serving. 
And so what God does is he uses that expectation to test Abraham's faith to see his obedience in action. Talked about this a little bit on last week that one of the things that God wants from us is what? Obedience. Against all doubts, against all odds, Abraham obeys. Believing that somehow God will provide. And in agony, Abraham readies the altar and prepares to sacrifice what the Lord had asked of him. Now, what's interesting is suddenly calling from heaven, the angel of the Lord said to him in chapter 22, verse 11, Abraham, Abraham, here am I. He replied, do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know. That you fear God because you have not, there it is, withheld what you were in love with. Sometimes God won't step in because you've not proven that you wouldn't let go of what you're in love with. This whole piece, even in the area of giving, some of us get in trouble. The reason why we don't see as much increase as God desires for us is because we don't know how to let go of the little we got. So he says to him, don't do anything. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Do not lay a hand on the boy. Now I know that you fear God because you, he is your son. Now, what I want you to understand is that out of gratitude, we get a chance to see an intervention and provision. And what happens, Pastor D, is Abraham names this place Yahweh Yaira. Yahweh Yaira. Everybody say that. Yahweh Yaira. Which basically means in the Hebrew, the Lord will provide. Abraham gets to experience another name of God and he calls it, what is it called? Yahweh Yaira. Say it again. Yahweh Yaira. Which means what? The Lord will provide. I call you Yahweh Yaira. That you're going to provide for me. You're going to open doors and you're going to provide. I'll never be in need and I'll never be in want. All of my needs are met according to your riches and glory. By Christ Jesus, you are Yahweh Yaira. And I came to tell some business owner. I came to tell some man. I came to tell some husband. I came to tell some woman that he's going to be Yahweh Yaira. It's not going to be by your strength, but it's going to be by the strength and the character of God. Somebody shout, he is. Yes. Yahweh. Yahweh. Yaira. The Hebrew word Yaira can either mean to see or to provide. And for us, Abraham, both seeing and providing are what God does. You're going to see and you're going to watch him provide. When we were dead in our sins, God saw and provided for us. He provided Jesus, his only begotten son to die in our place paying for our sins so not only do we see on the menu item provision but it moves me to the next menu item protection everybody shout protection protection, protection. now protection is interesting look at first kings 18 and 46 first kings 18 and 46 i don't know if they can put it on the screen for me if you can but i want to look at something here somebody shout protection 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 there's a man by the name of elijah elijah has just come right off of a victory and it says here and the hand of the lord was on elijah what was it the hand of the lord was on elijah look at it and he gathered up his garment and ran before ahab to the entrance of jezreel now what's interesting about this text is elijah has been given supernatural strength to outrun the chariots of his enemy. And historically it says that Jerome, Elijah ran 15 miles faster. 15 miles faster than the chariot. And that was strength that came from God. But even in this victory, he needed protection. He needed protection. Because this prophet has just finished a tremendous battle under the guidance and leadership of God. And the reason why protection is a key item on God's menu is because we are vulnerable after victory. 
I'm going to say that again. We are vulnerable after victory. We have tons of conversation about the victory, but we don't talk about the emotional trauma to the soul in the fight. Lord, help me today. Some of you all have won a battle, but you got scars. Lord, help me today. Which is why you're in the blessing, but you can't enjoy the blessing uh, because you got battle wounds uh, that you had to fight for where you are. Is there anybody in this room uh, that has had to fight? So Elijah has fought. He's won a battle, but he's got soul damage. He's got soul damage. And the reason why protection is key item on this menu is because he's got what my wife liked to say according to Daniel chapter 7. The enemy, this vision that Daniel gets, he reveals this vision, Ricky, to Nebuchadnezzar. And he begins to share that the plan of the enemy is to wear down the saints. Soul tiredness. This tiredness shows up on the heels of a race well run. Protection shows up in your life when you begin to question your calling and your gifts. It is when you review your failures and convince yourself that you're no longer qualified. And this is exactly what Elijah is up against. So if you keep reading the story according to chapter 19, verse number 4 of the Living Bible, then he went up, went on alone into the wilderness traveling all day. Now mind you, he just outran the chariots. But now he's having an emotional meltdown and he sat down under a broom brush bush and prayed that, look at it, that he might die after winning a battle. I've had enough, he told the Lord. Take away my life. I've got to die sometime and it might as well be now. And he laid down and slept beneath the broom bush, bush but as he was sleeping, Look at what it says. An angel touched him and said, get up and eat. I'm here to encourage somebody in this moment with these words. God is the same God who was with you before the battle, during the battle, after the battle, and in the midst of victory. Lord, give God a praise right there if you believe that. God is the same God who was with you before the battle, after the battle, during the battle, and in the midst of victory. I came to encourage somebody this morning to tell you God will even protect you against yourself. He won't even let you, Lord, get in the way of you hindering what he plans to do in your life. There's a story in one of the parables where Jesus, after encouraging his disciples and on his way down Damascus Road, he tells one of his spiritual sons, Peter, you know him as Apostle Peter, Satan desires to sift you as wheat, but I prayed for you. I want you to know you got protection. Somebody shout, I got protection. Say it again, I got protection. So we got a chance to see that on God's menu we have provision, protection, and thirdly, we have presence. Somebody shout presence. One of the things about presence, according to Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 8, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. God's table is the place is the place where God is present with his people and his people are present with one another. Now this is interesting because presence is important. That Jesus is not only inviting you to the table for his presence, but he is inviting you to the table with a company of other believers so that you can do life with somebody not by yourself. Do you catch this today? Whether you choose to eat, what or where you choose to eat is just as important as the dinner you're having. Most of us have a relationship with God, but we're at a table by ourselves. I remember being a kid in high school. I'm an introvert. I'm an extrovert because I pastor a church, but 
Sometimes this becomes too much. And I go hide in my office. I do. I'll hide in my office. I'll get to elder and dig, hey, I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm at my limit. Anybody ever been there? People limit? I get there. The anxiety builds up a little bit, and I smile and hug people and greet people. I'm doing it, but I'm nervous at the same time because I'm, I'm an introvert. I, I just don't do rooms. If you find me, I'm going to be in a corner. I'm surveying the room. I'm watching the room. Now, what's interesting is when I was in high school, I would do the same thing. So when it was time for dinner, I would go look for the empty table. I don't want to be around nobody. I don't want to say anything. And what we have to be careful of is that that will slip into our relationship with God and with people. Because when Adam was in the garden by himself, God provided opportunities for him to be at tables, at the table with the right company. And this is how Eve became about. And he says it's not good for man to be alone. So I want you to understand where you choose to eat is just as important as the dinner you're having. And as we consider this Psalm, chapter 23, verse 5, our, our themed passage for today, I think we can all conclude that this is really a lesson less about a physical table and more about what the table represents. It's less about a physical table and more about what the table represents because there is a number of you, as I've been praying this week, as we've been fasting and calling on the name of the Lord and calling many of you all lives out, some of you are in this room and there may be somebody on your row who's living an isolated life. They have no support system. The support system they do have is not a good support system because it's leading them in the wrong direction. If anything, it does nothing but add to frustration in their lives. So they're living isolated lives because they think that nobody gets them. And they think that they're in this all by themselves. And this is why Jesus invites you to the table. This is one of the reasons why we take communion. Because communion, communion is a metaphor of us remembering that there's going to come a day where neither one of us qualify to be at the table. But we eat and remember celebrating the fact that Jesus died so I can have a seat at the table. Some of us are living isolated lives. Some of us are extremely overwhelmed. If I took a poll in this room, many of you would begin to share with me the things that you're overwhelmed with, whether it's work or life or children, relationships, exes, baby mama drama, baby dad. Come on here if I hit your lane. Sickness in your body, financial calamity, your kids tripping, your husband has lost his mind. You're overwhelmed by it all. And you add on top of that a dead-end job that won't promote you. you feel like you're doing everything you need to do to get to the next place but they look at a different person instead of you and not recognize, recognizing your sacrifice. Who am I talking to today? You're overwhelmed by it all. Verse 5 is designed to help us understand that you may never get an invitation to their table or to the corporate table but you got a seat at the right table. Lord Jesus today. Ah, Lord, help me today. I'm trying to help somebody understand. Somebody shout, I got a seat at the right table. In this time right now, as I bring this to a close, people are lacking a sense of connection and longing. This is one of the reasons why I believe that Connect Church is absolutely necessary. We're not interested in just growing a church. We're interested in building people. This is a place where we are the body of Jesus' disciples, where people from all walks of life can come discover God, find community, and embrace their purpose. That's what we've been called to do. We may not get it right the first time. We may not even get it right the second time. We're not the perfect church, but one thing is for certain. We're going to love you to life. We're going to accept you the way you are. And we're going to make sure that every person in this room feels like they've got a seat at the table. I want to end a little different today. When you came to church this morning, our staff has been working overtime. They have been doing all they can to ensure that this year lines up with the vision of what we believe was set forth. One of the things I want to say to you is that in this pamphlet today, I want you to open it. If you didn't get it, just raise your hand and we'll serve you one. I want you to get it in your hand. I want you to get it in your hand. Because God never designed you to sit at a table by yourself. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't design you to sit at a table by yourself. God made you for community. Everybody say that I'm made 
for community. I want to encourage you in this room right now. There's some details here in this card here where we have what's called table groups, also known as life groups, whatever you want to call it. But it's an opportunity for us to do life together based on our current context. And there's some opportunities here for those of you who are married. I want you to know we've got a life group, a table group for you. For those of you who are single, we've got a table group for you too. For those of you between the ages of 18 and 29, because I believe critical decisions are made between the age of 18 and 29. And what you do between the age of 18 and 29 determines what happens in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and so on and so forth. So we've got a unique community to help give you the wisdom, the guidance, and the tools necessary to make decisions that will support your next. So we've got a community group for you. Those of you who are between the age of 11 and 17, our yielded youth, we've got an entire service that's put together just for you, for your kids. I want you to know that these table groups are absolutely necessary because if you think coming to church on Sunday is enough, you're sadly, misunder you're, you're, you're sadly uninformed because that's not how God made you. In order for you to grow in your walk with God, you need to get in a community of people who share the same belief system so that you can support one another. Those of you who are interested in being equipped in the spiritual gifts, whether that is being called to preach, whether that is understanding the nuances of the prophetic, understanding the gifts in the church, we now have a table group to equip you to serve. Can we give God praise for that? We now have a table group to equip you to serve. If you are a brother struggling, please understand that 88% of our black men that are arrested, that, that are arrested are black men. 88% of the arrests that take place in our world are black men that are being arrested. Please understand that 75% of our prisons are filled with black men. Please understand that they're building prisons to put our men in, but the devil is a liar. So we've created a community for men. Whatever your struggle is, whether it's baby mama drama, whether it's joblessness, whether it's habits that you're not proud of, we've got a group for you. Where are my men? Somebody shout hallelujah if you're a brother in this house. Come on. We meet every fourth Monday, men's Monday. We're calling it bold men. We're men that's going to stand out and we're going to make a statement. Come on, give God praise for that. If you are a lady, our women's ministry, hosted by my very own Dr. Dana Bennett of 16 Phenomenal Years, Gems, you all meet every third Saturday at 11 a.m. We also have a special discipleship course that takes place. It is not open right now, but we will open registration towards the end of this year. If you feel that you've been called to preach, anybody feel that they've been called to preach, we've got a table group for that as well. And one that I'm extremely passionate about, those of you who are entrepreneurs, where are all of my business owners at? Lift your hand. If you're an entrepreneur, we've got a table group for you as well. Now, here's what I want to say to you is all of these groups are available in the global app. All of these groups are available in the global app. If you set up an account, somebody shout, I got to set up an account. If you go to the Discover page, you will see all of these groups. And you don't have to have permission to get into the group. Just sign up and you're in the group. It is there where com camaraderie and community will take place. Let's give God praise. Amen. For table groups. Come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. I want to do something. I would be remiss if I did not in this opportunity give someone an opportunity to make sure that they're at the right table. I would. I think sometimes in church, sadly, we assume that everybody is saved. We don't want to assume because you can't get to heaven off of assumption. Jesus wants a direct relationship with you himself. And if you're in this room and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I want you right now, wherever you are, I want you to just slip your hand up. And we want to pray for you. And we're going to join you in the prayer of faith where you can get your relationship back with God intact. If you're someone and say, Pastor Ken, it's been a while since I've been to church, man. And I appreciate the invite. But, man, I'm disconnected from God. I'm talking to you, too. You can slip your hand up. Because it's not the plan of God for us to live in a backslidden condition. There are a lot of people who are faith switching, slipping, dealing with slippage. 
in their walk with God. But I believe there's enough grace and there's enough blood to cover whatever you're dealing with. And so while every eye is closed and every head down, if I've just spoke to one of those two groups, I want you to lift your hand so that I can recognize you and celebrate you. Is there anybody? Is there anybody that don't have a relationship with God? Is there anybody that needs to recommit their life to Christ? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may lift your head. Just pray this prayer with me. Lord God, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I recognize that I've missed you in times in my life. I make a decision today to decide to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I believe he paid the price for my sins. And on today, I confess him as Lord and Savior. Receive me just as I am. Now, Satan, you are a liar. I am now a child of God, accepted by God. Because of the sacrifice of Jesus, I am now saved. Let's give God praise. Amen for that. If you're someone in this room and you want someone to pray with you towards the conclusion of service today, I want you to know that myself, my wife, and a few of our elders, we will hang back a little bit. I'm going to ask you, uh, those of you who are in the sanctuary, if you can just keep the noise to a minimum while people are coming down for prayer. I'm going to ask our team to continue to serve us through, through music as we pray for people because people are dealing with various things in their lives. And we want to make sure that nobody walks out of here, one, in isolation, but two, feeling like they've been prayed for. A couple of things that we have here today, I'm going to ask my beautiful bride. Come on, let's thank God for Dr. Dana Bennett. 16 phenomenal years. Get a mic. We can get her a mic. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, so today we've got a food truck. Amen. Y'all ready to eat? Literally. <laughs> food truck. Let's eat. So we've got a food truck. So we're asking you guys to hang out with us. It's a Cajun so food, food truck. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to first encourage you to support this local black business owner outside. Amen. Can we do that? I said, can we do that? Now, I'm going to say this as well. When they serve you, tip. Tip. Somebody shout tip. tip. Let's be a blessing to her business outside of the doors of this church. There's a minimum that we have, but if at least 30 of you would make a purchase, we'll meet that minimum. Amen? So can we just, like, show her the favor of God? Like, can we, can we, can we do that? Let's, like, blow her business up. Amen? And while you're eating, take pictures of the food, post it, tag her in it. Also, we've got a young lady who has a full display. Lord, help me today. I was out there supposed to be in church, and I'm out there looking at the table. Um, I just had the card. What did I just do with it? What did I just do with it? Lord, have mercy. Oh, I got it. There we go. There we go. All right. This young lady came and visited us on, on this past weekend, and I asked her to come back. She's got 50 flavors of pound cake. <laughs> She's got gluten-free options, sugar-free options, uh, keto options, vegan options that are available. I want you to blow her business up as well. Uh, huh? Did I say that right? Keto, keto. You know what I meant. So, Y'all knew that. Keto, Kato, Halo, whatever it is. All right, so we want you to bless her business as well. She's got a nice variety of display. I don't want her going back home with any inventory. Amen. Now, 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 be wise. Some of y'all done lost some weight. Y'all wearing outfits you ain't worn in a while. Come on, you know I ain't seen you in that since 17. Since 2017, you look real good today. So don't overdo it. Amen. Get some, be a blessing to somebody else. Sweetheart, any closing remarks? Well, listen, um, I think Jerome said it at the beginning of the service when he welcomed you all that we say that the first time you're a guest and after that you are family. We just want to let you know that if there's anybody in this room that says, you know what, I think I found my home. 
I think I found my people that I want to sit at the table with, that I want to do life with here at Connect Church. We believe that no one does life alone. So that means the good times, the bad times, the in-between times, yep. we're going to be there for the baby shower, the bar mitzvah, the new house, the new job, the layoff, the sickness, whatever it is. We're going to be there to do life with you. And so I just want to give you an opportunity if you say, you know what, I think I found my way home, to raise your hand and come on down and we'll welcome you home. Amen. Is there anyone? Will there be one? <laughs> Your Baptist church. Will there be one? All right. Yes. No. Thinking about it. Going to date us a little bit more. That's what I think is going on. Amen. All right. Even if there's somebody online, if you say that you feel like this is home, drop in the chat the word home, and we will reach out to you and make sure that you get fully welcomed and feel like um, we've got our arms around you and that you're in our system. Amen. 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 I just want to end with a selection today. Let the church say amen. Let the church Say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Come on, let everybody say it. Come on. Let the church say. Pray, God, that you've given us something we can run with. Thank you, Lord, that the tables have turned in our direction and for our favor. We pray, God, that the miracles will continue this week. We pray for bold miracles, bold breakthroughs, and we thank you for open doors in the lives of your people. Amen. Let the church say amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. One last thing. If there's somebody here who just did not budget, to be able to partake in the food truck and the pound cake on today. But you say, listen, I, I want to eat with the rest of y'all. Please come see me. Um, I'll put you on my tab. I don't want anybody leaving here hungry. Um, I don't cook real well, but one thing I will do is make sure that you eat. Amen? So if there's somebody here that says, I just didn't budget for that today, please come see me and I will put you on my tab. Love you guys.